This collapse hypothesis for World Trade Center 7 involves floor beams at the northeast corner of the building pushing a girder which spanned columns 79 and 44 off its seat and initiating the collapse of the building. In case you're not familiar with this hypothesis, we'll summarise it very quickly for you. The five lines running from left to right are floor beams which are said to have pushed the girder which is running up and down to the west by thermal expansion. So in order to look at this closer, we have to look at the connection which is circled green. And we're going to look at it from the opposite direction, from the tip of the green arrow. So what we need to find out is how NIST represented this connection and was this connection indeed vulnerable to the type of failure that they supposed. And they look at first glance to have done a reasonable job until you look at the drawings and realise that they missed out two stiffener plates which should have been on the girder. And as you will see, to omit these plates has huge consequences for their story. So let's take a look at the elements that made up this connection. First of all, there are the stiffener plates. You can see there are two, one either side of the girder. When you look at how they're connected, they're welded at the bottom and the sides by 3 8 and 5 16 welds. They're called out as PL. They're 5.5 by 3 quarters by 1 foot 6. And the BS means that they're on both sides. You can see them in Frankel 9114 fabrication shop drawing. On the sides of column 79, there are side plates. They are 2 inches by 26 inches and are attached by means of welding in lengths of 25 foot 6 inches. You can see them in Frankel 1091 fabrication shop drawing. At the top of the girder, we have a top clip angle. It is 6 by 4 by 3 eighths by 9 inches. You can see it in Frankel 1091 fabrication shop drawing. The girder is attached to this clip by means of two bolts. As for the girder itself, you can see that in Frenkel E1213 floor framing plan. The girder is 33 and an eighth inches by 11 and a half inches by 44 foot 3 and 7 eighths inches. The girder sits on a seat plate, which is called plate PF. Plate PF is 8 and a quarter inches by 1 inch by 12 inches. It can be seen in Frankel 1091 fabrication shop drawing. This strongly asserted that this plate was only 11 inches wide, but it is in fact 12 and they have admitted this error now. Directly below this plate, there is another plate called out as PG. It is 14 by 2 by 18 and 7 eighths inches. It is referenced on the same drawing. Now, let's see how these elements would work together in terms of NIST collapse hypothesis. In particular, we're going to look at the difference that the inclusion of the stiffener plates would have made to this hypothesis. What you see straight away is that these stiffener plates increase the load-bearing surface that the girder has. With the stiffener plates included, the girder redistributes load over a wider horizontal area. Effectively, what they do is they increase the load footprint of the girder. And in terms of NIST's explanation, this means that the girder would have to be pushed far further in order to fail. The inclusion of these plates totally invalidates NIST's initiating event hypothesis. Without the stiffener plates, NIST's hypothesis is highly suspect, but with them, it is simply impossible. NIST have been formally asked to comment, but have refused to do so on the issue of the stiffener plates. It's clear to see why. It is because these two plates invalidate NIST's whole report on the collapse of World Trade Center 7. They make NIST's supposed initiating event for the collapse of the building impossible, and in doing so, invalidate their whole report into the collapse of World Trade Center 7. To exclude these critical structural elements in their analysis is beyond incompetence. A formal complaint is currently being lodged in a court, so the existence and the relevance of these two plates will be a matter of court record. NIST have filed a false report, either unwittingly or knowingly. And this can mean one of two things. Either they are guilty of scientific fraud, or they have not competently investigated the collapse of this building. Either way, their story is in shreds and the call for a new investigation into the collapse of World Trade Center 7 is validated.